Jeff Carlson takes control of managing your files. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices Magazine, our free magazine on Flipboard. Updated daily with the best articles on the web to help you do more with your Apple tech and beyond, Mac Voices Magazine content is available in the free Flipboard app, on the web, or in your favorite RSS reader. Visit macvoicesmagazine.com for details. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's been a little while since we talked to Jeff Carlson. He's been deep underground on a number of different projects. We'll be talking to him about those uh, as we go along. This time around, though, he has his Take Control hat on. He is the author of the new Take Control of Managing Your Files. Jeff, it's great to have you. Glad, glad to see you've come up for air. Yeah, thank you. Um, it, it, this is the weird cycle that I go in. I, I work on a lot of stuff, and then, uh, strangely enough, like a lot of things happen or at least become public at the same time. Uh, last week, this book came out. Um, I have another book coming out in a couple of weeks. But then I also had like a few articles that had just been in the pipeline and a photo job that was finally published. And so I don't I don't understand it, but I'm busy, and that's good. So. That makes me happy. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is the second edition of Take Control of Managing Your Files. I've got files everywhere, Jeff. I need help. (laughs) (laughs) The first book helped me some. Can can the next uh, second edition help me more? Because I really need it. Uh (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that that's the whole idea. Um the the core of the first edition is still all there. And basically for people who don't know about it, um th- this book really takes kind of a a, a top-level approach to the problem of having files everywhere, like you said. Uh, the, the, the crazy thing is, and I, this is something that I, I put on my um, blog last week when this came out, but I ran across this picture of Steve Jobs when he was introducing the iPad, and there's a, a, a picture of him on stage, and behind him is a PowerBook, I want to say PowerBook 140, like so the first laptops that Apple produced. And it struck me that like a lot has changed. A lot of the technology has changed, and yet we're still using the same metaphors, files and folders, and just moving things around as when he introduced that. You know, and so I mean that was um gosh, I don't know, it's been what, 10, 15 years since the iPad? Um, maybe not that much, but you know, certainly. You know, 20 years since since the Mac, uh, maybe 30 years. I can't do math. I'm a writer. But basically, we've been doing this for a long time, and yet we're still kind of using the same, you know, like hitting the same rocks together to try to, to, to manage things. And so what this book does is it offers a number of strategies for organizing files, uh, specifically on your Mac and your iPad and your iPhone, because now it's... It's a whole ecosystem. And so on one level, it's it's like strategy. Like here's you know a couple of different ways of approaching this problem. Because there are some people, you look at their desktop, right? And it's just files everywhere. And they have like maybe kind of a spatial awareness. I know that my, you know, uh, quarterly report spreadsheets are in the upper left corner of my desktop underneath some other uh, file icons. Or maybe they have like a really extensive file and folder system. Um, Or maybe there's some people who they don't want to do any sort of management whatsoever, but they still need to find things. And so maybe they take advantage of using tags in the finder. So what this book does is it, it gives a bunch of strategies like that and then digs down into a lot of the particulars that you'll find in order to help make sense of this. So, you know, like I said, tags, um, smart folders, all those kind of things. Wow. I'm Okay, so now I'm looking forward to this book even more. Um, and I intentionally stayed away from it because I wanted to, to come at this with you cold. But you, you're absolutely right. Um, 
you know, and, and there are there's no shortage of third party utilities out there who claim to solve all your file management problems. Uh, yeah. App, Apple has tried to solve some of your file management problems. There was a time right after the, the very first versions of iOS 10 came out that basically s- some very well known pundits were saying, ah, don't worry about files and folders anymore. S- uh, Spotlight will find everything for you. Well, that yeah. didn't work out very well. <laughs> um, you know, I, I and I, I admit I'm I'm a bit of a file and folder guy because I guess that's what I grew up with. Um, I know that there there are definite advantages to having the ability to take file types of mixed kinds. Let's just say a, a project. You know, so I might yeah. in a project I might have four graphics, um, one or two word word processing documents, and you know maybe even a video file. Or an audio file, and it, it, yeah. it definitely helps to consolidate those there. But then that you know it kind of falls apart because then if you if you're done with that project and you figure okay I've published it I'm done you trash it then your assets are gone. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and and then you have the complication as you said about I, I do some of my work now on a Mac I do some on my iPad or some on my phone. So. I, do you are you advocating different file structures for each device, or are you creating one unified theory like Einstein of um, <laughs> of, of file well, management? It's, <laughs> it's it's kind of one unified theory. I mean, uh, we sort of have a little bit of an advantage in that if you're dealing with files and folders on an iPad or an iPhone, you don't really have much choice. It's it's pretty much the files app, and you know Apple designed this intentionally because they didn't want the finder. They didn't want you to open up your phone and have all your documents spread all over the place. And so there's there's some structure there. The complication then is how do I make sure that the files on my computer will also be on my iPad? Or, you know, if I add, let's say I, you know, create something on my phone uh, or I edit um, a document, like let's say I have an Excel spreadsheet or a number spreadsheet, and I can edit that on my phone, which would be great. But how do I make sure that that is syncing to the correct location? And there are a bunch of different options. So, for example, you could have your own file system. Uh, by default, the iOS and iPad OS they want to put things in basically like really specific columns, little sealed areas. So. You may have, like, let's say your spreadsheet for, um, well, okay, as a practical example, um, Kirk McLearn and I, we have our photo active podcast, and we have an Excel spreadsheet that just tracks all of our um, episodes and upcoming guests, and it's basically where we organize what we're going to talk about. And it's great to be able to access that anywhere, but, um, you know, the iPad or the iPhone, what it would prefer to do is store things in a specific location. Um, actually, saying, <laughs> revealing that it's an Excel uh, spreadsheet kind of misses my point. So let's say it's a number spreadsheet, um, which we also had at one point. Um, but, you know, does that go into the numbers folder that's in your iCloud Drive folder? Can it go in? the photo active folder that I created that's on my iCloud folder that's also shared with Kirk. And can I make sure that he gets that? Or do I need to share the document itself and have him have access to the document no matter where it's stored? And so, you know, once you sort of get beyond the basic of, I have a file and I'm gonna store it in this one place, well, maybe I need it in another place. And then just like, like the complications just sort of spider web out from there. So, you know, bringing this back to the book specifically, um, in the second edition, I added a whole section on collaborating with others because the first edition was really about how are you going to get control of what you have and how are you going to organize your files as they are? And the reality is, oftentimes, you do need to collaborate with others, either through, you know, Dropbox or iCloud or, like I said, you know, on a document level, um, you know, maybe you have uh, a spreadsheet or a 
uh, you know, word processing file that's on Google Docs instead. So, you know, like I said, you just run into these, these complications that are supposed to make everything easier. You know, all this stuff is going to make things easier for us. And then you look down and you realize, I have a Google Docs file for one person. I've got a numbers file for another. Uh, pages, I'm, I'm collaborating on a, on a keynote presentation with somebody else. Where am I going to find these? I have a project that has assets that were used in the previous version of this project. So do I need to copy all those and duplicate them? Or can I just have them show up as you know, a, a, a bunch of similarly tagged things in a special window that just shows me where they are, irrespective of where they actually exist on disk? Yeah. And, and so it gives you a headache. <laughs> and so that, that's what this book is, is trying to you know, make sense of that so that even though there's not a one size fits all, this is what you should do to organize all your files. It gives you the steps to make that more clear, basically. Um, I'm so glad you brought up the collaboration issue because it, it, it's, I'm not going to say it's simple, but it's co comparing comparatively. It is very simple to say, okay, this is the way I'm going to manage my files. And whether that is good for my iPad or my iPhone or my Mac or not, this is the way I'm going to do it. And you can usually make it work, usually. But when you start start filing or folding in collaboration, then it becomes a whole nother animal. And collaboration yeah. seems to be the watchword, what, for the past five, six, seven years, you know, <laughs> that that all of a sudden we're collaborating on everything. And, you know, that's, I mean, that's the way the world really works in most cases, so, at least now yeah. anyway. So, you know, the idea that you're approaching that in this second edition is, I think, really, really beneficial. Yeah, I mean, it, it just seemed like a natural outgrowth because it's, it's what, I mean, I know you and I, we both collaborate on all sorts of things on various different projects. And so, you know, do we run into the issue where, um, you know, the, the famous, uh, as you're, you're editing a file among a bunch of different people, you have, you know, uh, you know, super file dot edit dot final dot really final dot. This is locked dot edit three dot, tiff right and <laughs> like like that it, it invariably happens and so you know how do you know which version you're working on how do you know who has that you know version checked out um and so i mean the, the a big answer to that is you know just be really consistent about your your file naming but you know who dictates that can you just you know, impose your will. Um, if possible, yes, impose your will <laughs> so that everybody can agree on it. Um, because, you know, th there are different ways that different people collaborate. Um, for, for Take Control, for example, I use it, this as an example in the book. Um, we have a system that's gone back, you know, 10, 15 years. And it's just an easy file naming system where, um, you know, once I have written a draft of the manuscript, um, it has, you know, the, the name of the book, uh, a version number. So, you know, um, uh, managing files dash one dash JC for my initials. And then when I'm done with that and I want to send it to Joe Kissel for, for editing, um, I will, you know, basically put that in an inbox that we have just on the shared, uh, shared, excuse me, Dropbox folder. And then he'll make a copy of that, put that into the out folder. So we always have a backup we can go back to and then increment it with his number and his initials. So without having to open anything, I can look right away and see, uh, oh, this is the most recent version that Joe is editing and it's in the out folder, so I can't touch it yet. And that's just, just one example, but, you know, people, I mean, sometimes you need to have lots of people looking at a, a file at the same time, and then you deal with, you know, track changes, and again, the complications just kind of keep going and going and going. So, it doesn't, 
the, the book doesn't hit every single thing, but um, the nature of this book is to, you know, paint in broad strokes and then drill down in some of the details on what's possible so that you're not just floating out there and realizing that somewhere, somewhere on my devices, I have this file. And I know it's important and my deadline is coming up and I need to find this. And do you want to be able to find it right away and get the work done? Or do you want to spend an hour, you know, trying to find whatever it was that's buried somewhere or, you know, named the wrong thing or misfiled in a folder? Like all these practical things that happen. Uh, hopefully this book keeps you away from all that, all that dangerous stuff. You used a phrase there that folks that aren't used to working in collaborative environments may not be familiar with, excuse me, specific collaborative environments, and <laughs> that is checked out. So mm -hmm. it's, do you advocate a, a check-in and out system? We have plenty of options. I hesitate to say it because I dislike it so much, but Microsoft Teams. We also have Google Docs. We also have some mm. collaboration capabilities within um, – the Apple productivity apps. Yeah. So, how, I mean, how do you feel about those in, in relation to a, a file management structure? Or do you, do you feel it's better to trust in those things and try to use some of those tools? Or is it better to, and, and, and do, do you suggest a check-in, check-out system? That's a very good question. Um, I mean, because I'm going to give the, the, the terrible answer was, uh, the terrible answer is, uh, it it depends. <laughs> it depends on who you're working with. It depends on on the systems. Um, I tend to be more drawn to, and, and maybe this is just because this is what I'm more accustomed to. I lean more toward something that that's more of a of a manual check in check out system um, rather than you know something that's that's automated that's that has a you know a content management system behind it. Um, but you know, on the other hand, uh, when we write tidbits articles, for example. Um, what I typically do is I'll just write that in BB Edit because that's what I'm used to using. Um, and then I will put that into a Google Docs document. And then that makes it available for Adam. And we turn on the, the track changes feature so that we can both be in the document at the same time editing if we need to. And sometimes if there's something that has you know, a, a real specific time value, um, you know, I'll be editing the bottom half of the article and he'll be at the top half of the article. And it just, it keeps track of all that stuff. And uh, like that stuff is great. Um, I haven't had a lot of, a lot of experience with sort of more enterprise level check-in, check-out systems. Um, I'm trying to think of some examples. So that's not like, like a, I, I'm not really, picturing like like here's how a big team should do it it's still very much a book on you know how how you as a as an individual user can work on your files and manage your files um, but also bring in the reality that you are going to be uh, collaborating with other people yeah I'm, does that make sense I mean, yeah it makes perfect sense um okay. you know i mean because you're right i think you could probably write complete books on the the, the full-blown corporate check-in check-out systems and their benefits and and their problems and i think what it comes down to just just like with the multiple file utilities that everybody has a theory everybody has a metaphor everybody has a procedure uh, to to do it, and you have to figure out whether that fits you and what you want to do. But you're right. I, I'm mainly interested in in my files because mm -hmm. so much of the time I feel like somebody else is going to dictate my collaboration as to which tools I have to use. Um, and, right. Unless I'm in charge of the project, and then I will dic do the dictation. <laughs> dic dictated. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like uh, as another example, um, one company that I work with, they use Trello, um, which is basically like a system for, you know, making sort of cards for each, each um, in, in this case, it's article. Um, and they have sort of columns that represent the stages of publishing of the article. So, you know, there's something that gets pitched and then once it's written, it gets moved over here and then there are comments that people can put in there, but the actual article's not there. It's just the system so that you have that, uh, you know, top-down view of here's, 
where everything is uh, at the moment. Um, you know, I know, I mean, I, I think, I think Adam and Tanya Angst, uh, I think they still use Trello for things like, uh, you know, groceries and household chores that need to be done. Um, but, uh, you know, like, like so something like that works, but it's also disconnected from the actual files. And so you have to, you know, make sure that you have some sort of, of, um, connection there, you know, like your own connection, obviously the client you know, doesn't really care where I store things on my hard drive. But, you know, if I can store those things in a shared Dropbox folder, then they have access to it. Um, you know, one of the things that that kind of inspired the, the collaboration too is, and, and this doesn't happen as much anymore, but I think sometimes we have to remember that that our computers are usually like little locked in systems. And so you can have, you know, the, the best novel spreadsheet, whatever. And if it's on your hard drive and you can't get to it, well, then it doesn't really matter. And so like, for example, even though Dropbox is sort of turned into this weird, we're going to do everything kind of company, I still use it because um, I, I mean, like all my work stuff goes into a Dropbox folder because I know that it automatically gets synced to the cloud. Um, it's kind of a backup, not really a backup, but I know that anything in my Dropbox folder, I can bring up on my phone or on my iPad. Um, we, when we were getting ready for this call, I, I did that on my Mac. I put a PDF of the book into uh, my Dropbox folder and then brought it up on my iPad so I can have a reference here. And I didn't have to airdrop it. I didn't have to do a whole lot of work. I just knew that it would be there. And so having that, that friction removed really makes a difference because I don't have to think about that. I can just think about the, the document itself, or, you know, in, in the case of, of, you know, making a PDF available to you, I can just select it and say, copy the link and I can just send you the link and you can download that without me having to like set up a, a shared Dropbox folder that you and I will have uh, that, you know, maybe we just need it for this one file. Okay. So <laughs> I'm doing it again. I'm throwing in lots and lots of information in big chunks. Sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's great because listening to you talk, I, I, I don't, I hope this is within the purview of the book or at least a discussion about the book, but I, cause I, I think we all got used to Dropbox. You know, that was one of mm -hmm. the first services, certainly one of the, the most popular services out there that garnered attention. And so yeah. you sort of tend to think that that's the way that these things should work. iCloud doesn't necessarily work exactly like that. And, and, and so do you discuss those, those two options in the book? And do you discuss how iCloud differs in the way they manage things? Or has it changed enough that maybe it doesn't still manage it the way that I think it used to? That is a very good question. Um, yes, I cover both of them, but I don't know if I specifically cover like whether you can share an individual file from your iCloud drive, which uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember if you can. This is why oh. we write books, so we don't have to have, put it in our head. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily thinking, Jeff, of of sharing a file. That if I if I had an agenda for today's discussion with you, mm -hmm. that I would throw it in Dropbox. Excuse me, that I would throw it in iCloud, and say, "Hey, Jeff, here's here's a link. Take a look." Um, I'm thinking more from the standpoint that I was at lunch. I thought of a question that I wanted to add to our discussion, so I have a a a document in in iCloud. I call it up on my mm -hmm. phone, I put the question in, then I come back here on my Mac, open up iCloud, and it's there. Yeah. So, so that, that's yeah. – cuz cuz what you just described with Dropbox is I guess what I'm asking, you know, can can iCloud do that with without necessarily the sharing function being part of the discussion. Um yeah, because your 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 iCloud folders, uh, your iCloud drive folders are going to be um, accessible on all your devices. So if you edit it on your phone, then 
the edited version is going to go up to the cloud and then come back down and sync to your computer so that when you get back to your computer, that updated version will be there. So, yeah. Is that, is that what I'm hearing you yeah. ask? And, and, and so yeah. that, in my mind, that makes iCloud a, a viable alternative to Dropbox. Um, yes. Yeah. Because I, I, full disclosure, I too use Dropbox. Um, maybe not mm -hmm. quite the same way that you do, but I still use it. And I've I've kind of wondered because eh, to be very candid, iCloud wasn't always quite as reliable, and there were a couple of little quirks in it that you know, for for example, yeah. um, if I if I opened a Keynote file or if I created a Keynote file and saved it, it saved it into a Keynote folder in yeah. iCloud. And it's like, well, okay, that's there are definite advantages to that, advantages to that, but there's some disadvantages too, and I'm not sure that's the way my head works, at least right now. Right, right. And th the good news is, is that um, it, you know, in the the current versions of the the iWork suite, do they even call it the iWork suite anymore? Um, but you know, key keynote pages numbers, um, as, as long as it's in iCloud. Um, or, or as long as it's accessible via the files app, you can open that. Like it doesn't have to stay in that that vertical silo that um, of like the keynote folder that's in the iCloud Drive folder. Um, I mean, the way I like to to put projects together is um, like let's say I have a speaking event. Um, I want my keynote file to be in with my other assets and so maybe i'll have like a folder that has you know all the images just so that i don't have everything all masked up together but as long as my ipad can access that folder on icloud drive or dropbox it'll still open up the the keynote document so that's that's a good I improvement but yeah um i i hear you uh, icloud does not have the best track record in terms of, um, well, so I think it, it, using photo active is, is a really good example because uh, I think uh, at the beginning we started with Dropbox, but um, uh, Kirk like was hitting the, the space limit on his plan and he didn't want to, to pay more and, and actually was just sort of like, he wasn't using it for anything. So we moved everything to iCloud. And then, um, I don't know, like, it was kind of spotty. So, I mean, this, this would have been a couple of years ago. Um, you know, things just, like, wouldn't necessarily appear. So then we moved to Microsoft OneDrive because we both have, uh, you know, Microsoft 365 accounts. And that then became also a little spotty because um, you had to... Oh, I can't remember what it is. Um, there were limitations about what could be stored where. So, so we ended up going back to iCloud, and we've actually had no problems since in the, I want to say, year and a half since we, since we made that move. So, um, you know, whatever Apple has done in the background, um, it's made it much more solid. And I'm sure there are some people who will pipe up and say, uh, not for me, but, um, you know, that's also kind of the, the point of all this as I knock my microphone um, is, you know, like, like sometimes you need to see which one works. And if you have a system that will transfer between those pretty easily, you know, like a, a, a folder system and a, and a file naming system that makes things all, all the easier. Jeff is back in the next Mac Voices to continue our discussion of iCloud and file management, as well as some other things about file management that you should really know, especially if you're using an online backup service. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'll see you then. As always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices.
advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com, bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.